In the previous video, we saw that even for that really simple circuit, we ran into a transcendental equation, or we would have had to resort to using graphical techniques, which aren't going to scale up very well once our circuit gets more complicated. A solution to this is to use something called the piecewise linear model. So with this model, what we're doing is we're approximating our diode IV equation. So we're taking that current voltage characteristic and we're going to replace it with two linear pieces. And so before I get into sort of what that looks like, let's just say sort of the, the trade-offs of this are, of course, our solution is going to be less accurate. So we're going to have less accuracy, but our solution process is going to be a lot easier. So we're going to have a lot easier time doing our calculations. And so depending on how accurate you need a, a solution to be, you might do this or you might do something more accurate such as a simulation or the transcendental equation that we discussed in the previous video. So let's now take a look at what do we mean by two linear pieces. So let's set up a plot here. So let's say we have our ID versus RVD. And so I'm gonna go ahead and label a key voltage here. And I'm gonna come back and define it in a little bit, but let's call that V gamma. So what we're going to say is we have two linear pieces. We're gonna say for any voltage VD less than V gamma, we just have zero current. So let me make this a little larger so it's easier to see. So we're gonna say we have zero current for any voltage VD less than V gamma. Now, once our VD gets greater than V gamma, we're gonna say that we have some linear line that has some slope like this. And so let me come back to using black here. And so the slope of this line where we have non-zero current, we can define in terms of a resistance. So let me put something like this. So we can say this slope here is going to be equal to one over R sub F. So let me define these two new terms, this V gamma and this R sub F. So our V gamma is our turn on or our cut in voltage. Uh, so you'll see both usually I'll refer to this as a cut in voltage. And so this is another thing that will be specified on data sheets. Um, typical values of this, uh, like we saw in a previous video, it's gonna be a little less than a volt. So for uh, silicon devices, PN junction, diodes, it's going to be about 0.6 to 0.7 volts. Again, there is some dependence on, well, there is dependence on materials, some de slight dependence on temperature and other factors uh, similar to that. Uh, this RF is called our forward diode resistance. So R sub F is our forward diode resistance. And so typically this is going to be a really small value. So think on the order of tens of ohms. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to assume that it's zero unless we're told otherwise. So we can assume RF is zero unless told otherwise. And so coming back to our plot and thinking about what that means if our RF is zero, uh, so if we have a, an R of zero, of course, this is one over zero, uh, which is undefined, but that corresponds to an infinite slope. So that means we would have this just going straight up. Um, so that sort of would be our standard. Our, our diode is either on with, with you know, any level of current at that voltage, or our diode is off and it has zero voltage across it. Those are sort of our two assumptions based on where our voltage VD is at. So let's sort of briefly look at what that looks like in terms of a, uh, in terms of a circuit then. So let's say we consider this case of VD greater than or equal to V gamma. So in this case, we have uh, some V gamma as well as some resistance that are going to be used to approximate our diode. So we have some resistance RF. Again, it's going to be relatively small. Uh, oftentimes we can assume that it is zero, as I said above, and then we're gonna have some voltage source V gamma. And so we would use that to approximate our diode. So we'd have a voltage VD across that. So those two things combined in series, and we'd have some diode current ID going through that. 
And again, we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at how to analyze diode circuits in our next unit. But the basic idea is we would just take this and we would replace our diode with this resistor and this voltage source. Um, okay, so what we can do is, of course, if we have some external um, resistance, we could calculate our, our diode current ID. So we could say our ID would be our VD minus V gamma divided by RF plus R external. <clears throat> and again, that's just if we had some external resistance hooked up here like that. Uh, so let me get rid of that. And then let's look at our second case, which is if we have our VD less than V gamma. So if we are not able to exceed that cut in voltage. So in this case, we have zero current. So we're on this line here. So zero current, which of course we can represent just with an open circuit. So if we we're doing our circuit analysis, we go and we replace our our uh, diode with just an open circuit. So we have ID, which is of course going to be zero because it's an open circuit. And we are still gonna have some voltage VD across it though. Um, again, just because we have a lot to cover, I'm not gonna work through an example of this, but if you want some extra practice with this, you can look at example 1.9 on page 39 in the text. And of course, if you're having issues uh, working that example or something's not making sense, let me know. Uh, again, we will come back and look at this stuff a little bit closer in our next chapter.